Lifting incidents are one of the most serious safety concerns in our industry. In 2001 and 2002, seven people died in lifting operations. The rig is on a workover and deepening job in the Judge Digby gas field. The lift really began two days ago at the regular morning safety meeting, where the safety aspects of all jobs are defined. This was followed by a visit from the crane specialist. The reason I called you out today is we have a lift we're going to be making later this week, and I'm going to need your help with it, one of your cranes. Okay. Uh, what it's going to be is a gas buster and choke manifold that's mounted on a skid, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a full part lift. Okay. And it should weigh around uh, 18 tons. All right. But what I'm going to want to do with it is set it up right along here. Okay. And we're going to be replacing our existing choke manifold and gas buster. Okay. So I want to get you out here today to uh, look over the site, see if you see any hazards we need to be aware of. I know we've got this Geronimo line right here. Yeah. That's going to be one concern, but I want you to look at it, see if you see anything else around that might cause us a problem. Pre-planning is one of the most important parts of the job. Uh, we can, by pre-planning, we can identify hazards way ahead of time. We can get our contractors in, let them get their opinion in, see if they have any issues or concerns. That way, when we come to do the actual job, we've mitigated a lot of risk way ahead of time. Hazards associated with lifting, uh, there's a wide range. They go all the way from mash fingers to slings that might part, drop in a load, uh, the truck that brings it in, having problems with it. So, following a clear brief from BP, the specialists advise on the lifting device and provide the right one along with the experienced operators. It will have been checked before leaving the contractor's yard. The load that will be lifted has also arrived. Time to get started. And that start is the same for all visitors, a site safety induction. Uh, there are a couple of points I'd like to make out. Uh, just to reiterate, make sure that you understand, uh, we don't wear any jewelry. Uh, we have back-end parking. And uh, we will do a JSA before we do any job out here. Uh, just for your we have shut the well in as far as drilling ahead. We're just circulating until we can have this lift made and everything is completed with it. Then we'll resume our operation. Anybody have any questions? Do you know if they moved uh, all that stuff that was on the ground? Yes, everything that's in the location of the lift and where we're going to set it, everything has been cleared. Okay, I need each one of you to sign the form. Make sure like, you fill out the appropriate, all the appropriate lines. And we keep this on file, so I need everything signed. So, all of us visitors have now had the safety induction for the site. So the next step is for all of us to ensure we understand the work scope for today. That's the responsibility of Smooth, the H&P safety technician. Okay, guys, we're coming up on the load here now. We just want to make sure that uh, everything's secure on it. This is the load we'll be lifting. We'll have to Don't put your hands on anything until we get it off the trailer, make sure that it's going to come up like we want it. Get the truck out, and then we'll position it wherever they want So how many people it. will be involved with the lift? We'll have two people on the tag line, and uh, my rigger's going to be flagging me, and I'll be in the crane. And then you'll have a uh, designated lift leader, I'll and we'll have the uh, truck driver standing by, and uh, a spotter for the truck driver. Okay, is anybody? See anything we hadn't covered? OK. If not, we'll go on up and uh, we'll go to where we're going to spot it and set it down. So what we want to do when we get over here, kind of check this area out and make sure that where we're going to sit it, everything is cleared, we don't have any problems. I think the grounds and everything's already been checked. Uh, Logan, didn't y'all check the grounds uh, earlier? Yes, sir. We had, uh, Kerbic came out here with me, and he built the location. He told me it stabilized this ground but we're gonna go ahead and use our outrigger mats to make sure we have good foundation okay. for the lift because, right. of, because of the weight of the load. Okay. And probably gonna have plenty of room. Yeah, there's plenty of room here, and uh, we're gonna set it probably 20 foot from the front of this uh, max back. Uh, we need to watch out for our Geronimo line and the crane's taking this regular test. So you've identified the Geronimo line as a hazard. What are your plans to mitigate against that hazard? Uh, we will have a spotter watching the crane. Uh, he should be up uh, far enough ahead, even with his boom way up, that he won't hit. But we'll have somebody watching, especially for that, 
as he makes his radius and as he's making the lift. So whose responsibility is that? Is that the flagman's responsibility? Yes, sir. Okay, so he'd be the one sign hand signaling right. if there's a risk that he Anyone sees a hazard. Else. Anyone else? Anybody can stop. Anybody can stop the shot. Good. Although the right of anyone to stop the work if a potential hazard is spotted is rooted in BP safety culture, the planning that takes place before the job starts aims to mitigate against that necessity. A vital part in this is played by the Job Safety Assessment, the JSA. The history of the JSA uh, goes back several years in that we were identifying areas where serious accidents and incidents were occurring and had to come up with a, a process to get complete rig interaction or crew interaction uh, to identify all our hazards uh, and any associated problems that may crop up during the job. Okay guys, we've already got the truck and everything spotted. Uh, the next step in our JSA is we're gonna unbind the equipment. We're gonna get ready to rig the crane up itself. Pinch points, it's some of the hazards. Pinch points on the straps, trip hazards, uh, and also the operator got to get up on the truck. To have a really effective JSA, what we've learned over time and experience is that we have to give rig crews the ample opportunity or time, if you would, to be able to sit down and go through all the processes and steps in the job and come up with what we refer to as a quality JSA. Prepare a crane to unload counterweights, okay? Make sure we got our pads on even surfaces. I think we're at, uh, we're to level up, right? Qualified operator, just let out that. Man, you have all certification and everything. You have personal and crane okay. and rigging. All documentation that's necessary. Okay. When was the last time the uh, crane was uh, inspected? Annually. We do them annually. We would do a daily and a visual on every job. But as far as the crane itself, we do it annually. And we will do a visual mm -hmm. inspection of it after we get through before we go to rig it up. Okay, that covers some, some very important items. Did we discuss a uh, crush or a foot placement? No. We fully expect everyone that'll be involved in any job task or particular operation to be a contributor to the JSA. And part of our strategy with JSAs is to get complete crew interaction, to get everyone involved, get people talking up, if you would, so in case even the smallest points are captured and we miss nothing. Well, there's four points that we seem to find as we look at incidents around mm -hmm. the world that you can group the hazards in the, these four categories. You know, the first is the equipment. I think we went through a bit of that. Second thing is the environment of the lift. The third thing is the crew. You know, are they qualified, are they experienced? And then the fourth thing that we find is third-party behavior. So are there any other hazards that you can think of in those four categories that we haven't just covered? How about me? I'll have to get on top of the crane and put the counterweights up there. Uh, we have any concerns about that? Yes, we've got uh, on this and uh, it's not a conflict of interest, but we've got something we've got to work out. Uh, OSHA standards say six foot off the ground, you have to have a full body harness on and hooked off. H and P's policy says uh, five foot. Uh, so in variance of this rule, we have a permit to work at the two pusher. Well, that sign out on phone, we can, we can get, you can get a copy yeah, of that. we can get a copy of that and uh, get one filled out. Uh, the crane itself, uh, what height is that off of the ground, the actually? De the deck is actually five foot, four inches high off the ground, okay. where I'll be standing at. When you're up there and you're moving from spot to spot to be able to put the counterweights on, make sure you hold on to the grab rail, because there's a grab rail up there to yes. secure yourself. So in this case, the difference between five feet and six feet, which is safer? In my opinion, it would be six feet would be safer because if I would have this body harness and the lanyard on, I, would, I may be crushed or something cannot get out the way quick enough. It's tight quarters up there, and if something would go wrong, I couldn't escape if I was tied off. So in this case, the six-foot rule is safer? The six, six-foot rule is safer. When BP and H&P work together, both companies have similar cultures. We have our set of safety systems, BP has their set of safety systems, and we work those uh, together. Uh, if, if one safety uh, rule is, is, is higher than the other, then that's, that's the goal that we'll, that we'll achieve. Now guys, uh, as in the other ones, uh, I need each one of you to sign off on 
this particular JSA that we've covered is rigging up the crane. Documentation is critical on all, all of our processes. It's one thing to have them fill out the paperwork and then go outside and do the job, but it's another thing to actually understand and verify that everything they've identified in their JSA is being carried out on the, on the, on the site. So we'll go out, we'll, if you would, audit the JSAs as they perform the work, and they have com complete authority to stop the job if there's a change in the job, revisit the JSA, and get it correct. So we have a detailed plan supported by a JSA and signed off by everybody involved. We have a crew that's qualified and the equipment is certified. So let's get out to the site and inspect the equipment as it arrives. The crane has been inspected within the last 12 months and the load is known to be well within its capabilities. The driver's certification has also been checked. However, the crane and its ancillary equipment must undergo its own on-site inspection. Are we going to lift all that off at one time? Or are we going to no. separate loads? OK. We'll take the plates down. We're going to set them on the ground. We're going to grab the mats, place the mats by each outrigger. Come back and grab the plates and put the plates on top of the mat by each outrigger. And then when we're completed with this, we're going to return and then get the counterweight. OK. And the counterweight is going to be placed on the deck of the crane. Okay. Tell me what the hazards are with this part of the operation. How could David get hurt? David could easily fall off, slip off the truck. As you can see, it's very congested up there. You have to wear hand protection like gloves and stuff, and just be aware of your surroundings. Make sure whenever you pop them that you don't, have, you don't put your hand in between here or something like that where they may be pinched. You may pinch your finger. And when you're on the ground guiding them, you, Make sure your tag lines are long enough and stay away from it. Looks good, guys. What do you think? Think everything's pretty secure. That's good. We need to check out the crane also. Let's we'll uh, we'll make a little tour of it, make sure everything on it looks good. In any inspection of equipment, the golden rules of safety remind us that all relevant safety devices must be in place and working correctly. This crane is featured with a boom lockout, which means if you get below a certain uh, boom angle, to getting to difficulty, it will shut off. It also has a load monitor where it gets close to getting over the limit, it'll also shut off. And it's also equipped with the anti-tube lock. Once it touches the cutoff point, it locks out everything, all the controls. Could you show me how that works? Sure. Just watch the block. Stopped you cold. With all the equipment checked, Bobby, the experienced crane operator, now has to draw up a lifting plan. So Bobby, tell me what this form is all about. It's an assessment made before we make a lift of all the information we have to prepare for the lift. So what this does is gives you and us assurance that you have the right equipment for the job. Correct. And you've looked at the risks associated with the environment of the site. Correct. Each job, even from before the arrival of the crane on site, is covered by its own JSA, adding up to a seamless thread of activity in which every action has been planned and every risk has been mitigated. With the pre-rigging complete and the lifting plan in place, the connections between the crane and the load can be made. Every detail, such as relating shackle size to the dimensions of the lifting lugs and load weight, have been taken into account as well as a completely safe method of attaching one to the other. As I said at the beginning of this program, the key to safe lifting is to identify the hazards and create a detailed plan. Well, this is it. We've had about 10 to 15 people over 60 hours to create this detailed lifting plan for a lift that'll only take about five minutes. Job planning for safety is of utmost importance. First of all, at H&P, uh, planning for a job is, is cultural. I mean, it's part of our culture. It, uh, it goes back uh, several years. When we work with a company like BP, it just makes the planning portion that much easier. Our ultimate goal is to achieve a transparent partnership between BP and all of our working contractors out here so that we're together in one integral team. The eight golden rules 
give all of us, BP and our contractors, an excellent base to work from and achieve our safety aspirations. What's really important here is all that preparation, if it's done right and the plan followed, will have a safe lift. Planning, based around a series of JSAs, forms the foundation of safe lifting. The plan has to be thoughtful and thorough. Just as importantly, it has to be followed to the letter. But always with the option for anyone to stop the lift if they spot a potential hazard. Stop, Sam. The team will most assess the lift for any learnings that they might apply in the future. It was a safe lift, so they adequately identified the hazards and they stuck to the plan. My four areas of concern, equipment, environment, crew, and third-party behavior, they were all addressed adequately. What was really impressive to me was when Benji stopped the job. He noticed the sling was out of position, and I think it just goes to show that anybody can stop a job on any BP site when they see an unsafe condition. And finally, this was a fairly large lift and it required lots of planning. But I think what's really important is every lift should have the same kind of planning because no lift is routine. The next lift is on a very different scale. It requires the same disciplined approach. Okay, any other jobs for today? The safety meeting. All jobs are assessed from the safety point of view. It's the first opportunity for all involved to look at a job in detail and identify its safety requirements. This looks like a good spot for me to Assessing the risk. A tour of the site to check on all elements with a bearing on job safety. Y'all want to go ahead and go with the JSA on here? Building the JSA. Bringing together all the safety aspects in a single document. Remember, it's hot today, fellas. Y'all need to take a break. Take a break. We got water in the back of the truck and ice chest. They got rules for lifting around here, and you got to have the proper slings and all when you're lifting. You got to have the proper weight limits. You got to know what you're lifting, what's the weight on it. We'll go ahead and sign it. Signing the JSA, confirming agreement of the entire team. Now remember, anyone can shut down the job. If y'all see something unsafe, we'll go ahead and shut it down. Oh, here's the inspection on the train. Certification, checking that the equipment has been properly maintained. At a 15 degree, we got a seven foot reach. We Lifting for, uh, plan, ensuring that the capability of the equipment matches the task. Planning is the best thing about the job because that way you know what's coming next and you have better time to prepare for what you're doing. Rigging for the lift, ancillary and support equipment put in place. We want to isolate the lift area. Third party awareness, placing cones and barricades, keeping the job apart from those not involved. Okay, Cheese, you want to go ahead and unbind it? Controlling the lift, pitching the tag lines, designating the single flag man. I'm going to go ahead and boom up. Y'all should stand clear right now. The lift. Predictable, controlled, and safe. One of our biggest challenges in the field, I believe, is keeping the crews properly motiv motivated to avoid complacency. We can't afford to rest on our laurels when it comes to safety. Most guys come out here to have families, and they want to go home the way they come out here. And we all spend most of our time together on the rig and we develop a family out here. And you hate to see a family member get hurt, so safety is a key.